Hi, this is Sherry Veronica. What's in your news for Friday, the second day of February in the year 2024? It, there's a lot there that I've put and I intend to do some more videos along with what, I've, what I have here. But I come to say thank you for subscribing. I share information. I know it's going to be something that you're concerned about where the laws in Barbados are going to prevent you from having freedom of speech, but I'm always here for you, okay? I will continue to share information. Just make sure it is truthful. Make sure you speak the truth. Thank you again. This is Sherry Veronica. Tomorrow is Saturday. If all goes well, I'll talk to you then. If you are enjoying this so far consider subscribing, it helps keep this channel going. Hi, this is Sherry Veronica. The 12 member jury was all in place and Carlisle Graves was going to be the presiding judge over this particular matter. but. Jandolf St. Clair decided to throw the towel in. He, he wasn't going to say he was innocent when he probably isn't innocent. But anyhow, sometimes I think that these um, young people, he's about 35-ish, I think that they, they know, they know that when they confess early they get time off well deductions they get deductions now his was not early early but still they didn't have to go through the whole process of calling witnesses and taking up time you know it's just too much court time that's taken up when you go through that whole um game of guilt or innocence okay so he just threw in the towel he says, okay, yes, yes, you have the right man. You know, I did it. So now you have to wait. You have to wait to see what Carlisle Graves is going to do. And he is like a heavy um, hitter. I mean, people think that about Carlisle, that he he's tough on on, on crime and, and people who come before him that have been found um, guilty of any crime he he doesn't play that's for sure carlisle graves does not play so we have to wait until around aprilish to hear how much time at the hotel in st philip that jandal st clair like i said he i, I don't know if i said he is jandal st clair we have to wait to see how much time he is going to get and this is in relation to the death of Jamar Haynes. Okay, Sherry Veronica. Every day, this is Sherry Veronica. Every day, every day, someone's in your news talking about not being paid by the government, yet the government says it is doing very well it's strong it has strength behind its push and it's pushing bigger than its weight and all that kind of stuff you know you hear it from the central bank government you hear it from other people in barbados how well you guys are doing but is it trickling down to the people it should trickle down to not to the poor only but to pharmacists how how would you not pay your pharmacists what they are due? And I would like to hear from poor people in Barbados with all this money that they have thrown around. How are you faring? How are you doing? Are you doing so much better now that Barbados is saying it is, you know, pushing, you know, it's, 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 it's really packing that punch and doing well. How are you doing in Barbados? How have you seen how have you seen the progress and the strength, the financial strength Barbados says it has? How have you felt it and seen it in your pockets? Okay, here again, here again, someone's in your news talking about not being paid for three months. Three months? How is it even possible? This is Sherry Veronica. Hi, this is Sherry Veronica. I think he got off 
quite easily yes his conscience is probably going to bother him until he dies no doubt i think that what he did is going to bother him but i think he got off easily with um Lorianne smith bovell she gave him th almost three years but it's suspended and he has to pay his daughter fifteen thousand dollars what's fifteen thousand dollars going to do oh, i mean i don't know what fifteen thousand dollars is supposed to do he's supposed to go to counseling and that kind of stuff and you know she says that because he poured cold water on her hand it showed that he has some sort of remorse you know because he poured cold water and put some ice on it after he did what he did i think he got off quite easily i think he she's going to have to see that scar like all her life all her life now i'm not saying that three years in hotel st philip would have like satisfied this whole thing i think he should pay her until he or her is dead whichever comes first whether he dies first or she dies i think or she dies first he should pay her some part of his salary should go to her every month because of what he did because what she has on her hand is going to last until she dies i think punishments should be given out like that i think that if you do something to someone and the person sees it every day of their life or it's something that you can remember if it's some sort of violation as a violation that you remember for the balance of your life i think that the perpetrator should pay financially monetarily i think they should pay for the balance of their lives because what you did was is a scar that is a scar that doesn't go away it's a memory that won't go it's not going to go away okay it's not going to go away fifteen thousand dollars is nothing a three-year suspension is nothing 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 can take back what albert did nothing can take back what he did to his daughter except that he paid her until he's no longer around to pay her and if his if he's going to get some sort of social security payment it should go to her part if he's not around it should go to her or if he's around even part of that should go to his daughter it, you need to get serious about things like this like you know these uh, abusive kind of parents parenting is hard yes we know this it's hard to raise a child but to do this to, to scar her for life for life for doing something that probably came natural yes i said it she did what comes natural to a lot of people there it's part of your atmosphere is part of who you are you have to fight it you have to have very good parents and you have to be listening and they have to be constantly talking to you they have to tell you your history i don't know how many people are taught their history via their parents but it's something that some parents do tell their children to watch out for these proclivities for these things that you're going to feel like doing you have to overcome you have to overcome all that okay so she did what came naturally and he probably did what came naturally too and what should come naturally in cases like this is a payment to her for the rest of her life okay he got off easily. He got off very easily. This is Sherry Veronica. Hi, this is Sherry Veronica. I read this and I remember... I remember when um, Michael Ashley sued Omar Watson. Watson is his last name. Yeah, but you remember when? <laughs> remember when Michael Ashley sued Omar Watson? What became of that case? Anyhow, anyhow, they're talking about the this bill that Marsha Cado is talking about, which can, which can level a fine 
$70,000 or seven years imprisonment, even if we hear, even if the data is completely factual and in the public interest, even if what you're saying is completely factual and it is in the interest of the public, they don't care. So I can say, seeing someone talk about food is very distressing and offensive so so how, how how do we go from there how do we go from there that i can say that food you doing a feature or a program or someone talking about food in public oh my god i feel as though you know it's causing me anxiety and emotional distress so where do you go with that how far do you want to push that this is crazy crazy it is crazy i hope you're reading what's going on in your news and what they're trying to put as a, a law in barbados it's bad now i don't know what's gonna happen oh lord there's only so many um blogs i can do people will be turning to me in droves i mean yeah how could you make this or even think about making this a law freedom of speech is gone if this were to happen how can you say something that is the truth and, and, and you could be fined or imprisoned <laughs> and you know already that a lot of people there are allergic to the truth so you know you could say the truth and it could be offensive or it could cause anxiety i think about that guy what's his name again anthony nelson yeah 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 he, he, he what would you say about him and what he did was that offensive was did that cause you anxiety or, or or was that okay was it okay for him to have said what he said you see this thing is all mumbo jumbo i don't know what how, i don't know how you do it there i really do not know how you do it there but to think to think that something can be completely completely factual and in the best interest of the public to know about don't go down there there's a hole don't go over there you know there 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 whatever you know you can you can get burned you can be saying something and warning the public about something that is important and get fined you risk getting fined or put in prison it's crazy <laughs> this this is crazy it, it is and if you don't see it as that I, I don't know what to tell you i just don't know what to tell you but um I guess they're saying that um, the government the government was made aware that what they're doing, you know, is not cool. It's, it's just not cool, but it, we'll see what happens. This is Sherry Veronica.